Hello everyone, this is Professor Reha here with another class examination to host. Now this time we're going to be discussing the Witch Hunter, which is the combination of the Occultist and Nightblade. Now this particular class is fairly odd in that there is very little actual synergy here, but yet despite that there are some very unusual combinations that really can slap down a large quantity of your enemies. So it really depends upon the circumstances, uh, how you're building specifically. Now first off, you probably are aware of this, but a lot of your uh, a lot of your builds are going to be wanting to include possession a lot of the time because it's the only exclusive skill you have access to. <laughs> this is one of the few um, classes that you have just one exclusive skill, um, and it, it makes a fairly significant impact. Now I actually want to take a hot minute to discuss specifically the Nightblade portion of this class because there's a lot going on here. First off, uh, I'm actually going to discuss the, the three skills that you should always consider with this class right off the top, because that will give some better context later on to some specific combination, ability combinations that I'm going to be talking about later on. But the first would be Anatomy of Murder. Now, both these classes do fairly impressive amounts of vitality damage, and Occultist actually has some pretty good access to bleeding damage through Bloody Pox. So that's fairly nice. Now, interestingly enough, this is the only source of bleeding damage you can do, but the vitality damage not only does this do, but the Dreeg's Evil Eye does, so as Witchfire does, Sigil of Consumption does. Heck, Blood of Dreeg does. Actually, anything that isn't a pet in this build, even Stinking Doombolt does vitality damage. Everything you do that is not a pet here, or related to pets, does vitality damage, or, in the case of vulnerability, decreases vitality resistance. So, yeah. Anatomy Murder is spicy. Now, I don't recommend usually Merciless Repertoire here, because... Obviously, Occultist does not increase cold damage. Yes, you can use the poison and acid damage. Yes, this increases retaliation damage. If you're going with a retail build specifically, Merciless Repertoire is where you want to go. But that is a very specific build, and a lot of the time, you're not going to be looking at Merciless Repertoire at all. The second one you're actually going to want to consider is Phantasmal Blades. First off, this does bleeding damage, which you already can increase through Anatomy of Murder. Second off, you can convert that piercing damage to vitality damage, allowing you to increase it ding, even further, you go into more vitality damage here, more bleeding damage here, and then you slap in some chaos damage. Now, there's a little bit of cold damage here, but that's not really that important. You are doing chaos damage here, and that's pretty spicy. You also finally have Ring of Steel, which does piercing. You have bleeding here, and this is, you know, fairly a fairly safe route in terms of damage output, because after all, you're also doing the weapon damage here. You're doing the weapon damage here as well. If you have a vitality or bleeding weapon, great. You're going to wind up doing quite a bit here, but this is going to be bleeding. Piercing is also never a bad thing, necessarily. Now, the reason why I don't recommend a lot of these other ones is because Shadow Strike, Piercing Cold, it, while it does do weapon damage, unlike with Ring of Steel, which eventually does bleeding, which you're going to likely be increasing with Anatomy of Murder anyways, this eventually goes into poison, and then finally some vitality damage at the very end here, if you go this far into it. And even then, it's such a small amount of vitality damage that it's often, it's a huge amount of point investment to get to a skill that does not do a whole lot of vitality damage at the end of it. I mean, 500 is not a whole lot by this point, usually. Does that mean that Shadow Strike is trash? No. Shadow Strike is still very effective, especially if you have Possession, because you are still going to be increasing the Poison Acid here and the Vitality here. You just won't really be doing anything with the large quantities of Cold Damage, which is the primary method through which this does damage. Same thing with Amorasta's Blade Burst, although again, if you're going with a Retail build, which focuses very heavily on Poison Acid, this is still very useful. It's not something you broadly want to go into, and you all obviously don't want to necessarily go into this either. You could also go into Blade Spirit, but again, this requires a huge point investment, and it does not scale with pet bonuses, so there's not really any reason to prioritize that over anything else. Ring of Steel, at the very least, piercing damage is a nice splash in, get some bleeding damage later on, some good crits. 
Uh, the ability to hit everyone around you is fairly useful as well, but this is also an ability I often find myself at least contemplating whenever I build this. You could, of course, go into the famous Knight's Chill, but this only reduces Pierce Cold and Poison S resistance. Again, if you're going into retail, you want to go into this, but otherwise it's not really a big deal. So, of course, Phantasmal Armor is always something you should at least contemplate because it's just plain old useful all the time, but it's not really hugely important. You could additionally, actually, this, this might be better than Ring of Seal, it is. Uh, Devouring Blades, actually, retrospectively, Blade Trap is probably a better third pickup. I, I always forget this ability for some reason. I keep forgetting this exists. But this does actually do Pierce, Bleed, and Vitality, so this is actually a better pickup than Ring of Steel as well. And even if you're a ranged character, you can utilize this, you can utilize Phantasmal Blades. There's, you can build ranged if you want to and still have this be very effective. So these are the skills that you really want to be considering is Anatomy of Murder, Blade Trap, and Phantasmal Blades. These are the three that you really want to be looking at and deeply considering with this combination. As for the Occultist, Bloody Pox. Pretty much no matter what you build, Bloody Pox is going to really do well for you in this particular class very broadly. Uh, actually, I'm going to surprise you here. Curse of Frailty and especially increase to vulnerability is also going to do you a lot of good here. It increases or it decreases the elemental resistance, which includes cold. You've got the vitality drop, the poison acid drop. If you're going into the dual wielding, you've got the physical resistance drop if you want that. And you've got the bleeding resistance drop. There is absolutely no reason why you should not at least consider Curse of Frailty. And finally, Dreg's Evil Eye. Again, we have the Poison Acid Damage, which kind of emphasizes the retail build, but even if you're not going with that, you've got the Vitality Damage you can be increasing later on as well, so that's fairly handy. It does pretty respectable amounts of Vitality Damage, especially if you go into Focused Gaze. That's a pretty good time. So, overall, that this, again, you can build Dreg's Evil Eye in pretty much any build here and have it work decently well for you. So these are the skills that I would considering pretty much all builds. Possession, that's pretty much given, so I did include it here, because obviously as the only exclusive skill, you'll probably be going into that at some point anyways, so it wasn't worth mentioning. Now some very specific interesting ideas you can play. I've been referencing a retaliation build quite a lot, so obviously Blood of Dreg here, obviously we want to be going into Blade Barrier, and... From here, you've got quite a few options. I generally go into Knight's Chill and Amarasta's Blade Burst, go into Merciless Repertoire here. This is a fairly effective time. Uh, maybe you want to go into Shadow Strike. You can really take advantage of that Cold and Poison damage with Merciless Repertoire. That's fairly effective. Of course, Curse of Frailty is fairly nice with the Retail build as well. If you can fit it, Bloody Pox, obviously Possession is a good time. But this is generally, you know, you don't want to go past here with the Nightblade a lot of the time, unless you really want Devouring Blades. So, or, um, Circle of Slaughter as well. But, you do have quite a number of retaliation methods here. You could also go into the, uh, Pneumatic Burst if you want some healing. I don't usually go this far into Elemental Awakening, because obviously there's not a whole lot of Elemental Damage out of Occultist, but if you really want to, you can. I usually stop at Shadow Dance, and even then I don't necessarily always go in for this. This is often pretty nice. I sometimes will go into Breath of Golgothian just so I can double up and whack people with Slayer's Witchfire in second right with even more Vigor, which is fairly effective, by the way. But you can absolutely do that as well. Uh, there are a couple of other interesting options, at least going into, pardon me, get out of here, going into the full Slayless Witchfire, and then going all the way through here to Execution, is actually pretty darn effective. Now, this is a lot of cold piercing and poison acid damage, obviously, so you do generally tend to want to go into Merciless Repertoire. And I personally, considering, you know, you're going into Slayer's Witchfire already with all that Vitality and Chaos damage, I find that Blood of Dreg is a nice splash, and for a nice hybrid retail uh, default attack build, which can work very effectively. Um, but you don't really necessarily need all of this. Blood of Dreg is just really nice, especially with Aspect of the Guardian. Blood of Dreg is just really nice for the healing that it provides, which is a decent amount. And then, of course, the increased damage if you decide to go into Aspect of the Guardian. 
and then just go into second right if you really want to for the vitality resistance, extra vitality damage. This is generally how I run this. If I'm going to go with default weapon attacks, this is how I want to run this, because I want execution. I want to use execution as often as possible, and Sales Witchfire offers an attack speed buff, so that's pretty much a no-brainer. It's at least worth splashing into. Sometimes, instead, if I'm feeling hyper-aggressive and I don't want to splash in some retaliation, I'll go into Amorasta's Blade Burst to increase my cold and uh, my poison acid damage. This is great with the default weapon attack build, because you can really go ham on this. Uh, sometimes I'll go into Shadow Strike instead, because that allows me to close the distance, and I'm already going to be at this level anyways, so it's kind of why not. I don't usually build Monatic Burst if I'm going to be going into that, because Blood of Dreeg, but you never know. If you want to, you can, if you prefer that over Blood of Dreeg, or if you don't want to splash in the retail, that's fine, you can absolutely do that. Uh, another thing that's really effective with the default weapon attack build is the Knight's Chill as well. So that's really nice. So, what about the rest of this? You're probably thinking to yourself, well, there's a whole lot going on here. Like, there's a whole bunch of things that kind of work together. Uh, what about pets? Don't. Don't do pets. There's two primary reasons for avoiding pet builds with this combination. Can you do it and can it work? Yes and yes. Should you? Not unless you have very specific items already lined up for your late game. The problem here is that the Summon Familiar has some utility, I will give you that. This increases elemental damage, which you can channel into the cold. It gives you Lightning Retaliation. It gives you bonus elemental damage. It gives you bonus elemental resistance. It's a fairly respectable pet to build. Splashing in the Familiar. I can understand. Splashing in the Hellhound does not make sense because it increases your fire and chaos damage, which is fine by itself. But the problem here is that you have so many other damage types that you're enhancing, primarily vitality, poison, and acid, and bleeding, that, and especially since the amount of fire damage that the Nightblade can do is zero, and there's only one ability that does chaos damage, the Hellhound isn't really able to pull its weight. Did, could you splash into it so it can basically explode to death on enemies and do 10% of their health? Yes, but that's fairly expensive, especially if you want some actually decent explosion going on here. So, 25% reduction to enemies' health, that's fairly respectable, but that also costs 16 stinking points to get there. And if you're not looking to increase the Hellhound's stats, he's going to be summoned, die, and then you're out a Hellhound for 18 seconds, which is a pretty substantial amount of time in the thick of it, especially since I believe this... Okay, it does not, okay. Uh, but 18 seconds is still a pretty large amount of time to not be able to use any one given ability. So, I generally don't recommend heavy amounts of pets with this combination. This is one of the few times you will hear this from me with regards to the occultist. This is one of those times where you really want to steer away from pets. Splash the familiar if you're really interested in it. Or you have just that right item that does everything you want it to, and it happens to increase someone familiar. Go for it. Absolutely. The familiar makes some sense. Especially in a multiplayer game, where the familiar will heal everyone in the area. And give this, this aura to everyone. In a multiplayer game, the familiar is actually much more viable. But don't touch the hellhound. Please. It really will not help you. It will drain points away for not enough return. And of course, naturally, since you only really want to be splashing in the familiar, if at all, you don't need Bonds of Bismil. The familiar comes back fast enough where it's not that big of a problem. It's 18 seconds sore, but it has a self-heal, it has increased resistances, it doesn't die that often. It's also ranged, so it tends to be out of the line of fire anyways. It's not really that big of a problem if your crow dies, because usually you can just bring it right back, it flies away a little distance, heals itself, zaps people from a distance, it's not really much of a problem. The Hellhound is melee, it dies all over the place, it dies pretty consistently. It's much harder to keep this thing alive. The Crow is fine. Like I said, self-heal, range attacks, Crow doesn't care. But you really don't need Bonds of Bismil in that particular circumstance. So, yeah, that... Really, this, this can, this, if you build this right, and you're just a little lucky with items, this build absolutely slaps. It can do absolutely huge amounts of damage to whatever it feels like looking at wrong.
you can do percentage of health damage to large groups that and you can increase all of this damage by quite an impressive amount you can do high amounts of single target percentage of health damage absolutely smack down people that way you can mix and match these uh, at the end of the day though in order to be really fluid in your build you are going to need items while I have shown you some things that kind of work if you've been estimating throughout the video you'll realize that a lot of these abilities work roughly 50% effectively. It's not quite as diehard dedicated as, say, Shield Breaker, which was fantastically coordinated. It's about 50% here, uh, is what you're looking at. If I had to approximate it uh, without necessarily crunching any numbers, but it's it's definitely an interesting build. It's definitely high power. If you're an aggressive player, this is what you run with. It really is. You can absolutely do huge amounts of damage with this if you build right, and uh, like I said, you're a little lucky with your itemization. Just a little bit. But, with that being said, uh, there's not really much else we can talk about here without bringing items into this conversation. So, with that being said, thank you all very much for joining me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, what have you, please leave them down in the comments below. I do read them. And, as always, have a great 24 hours. And if you like this, please like and subscribe, of course, but that's pretty much given. Thank you.